So in this video, we're going to define the various institutions that support markets. But before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about how institutions support the markets themselves. Government and society and business together have kind of this complex interwoven relationship. And this complex interwoven relationship is in itself the market. As we get into some of our different models and as this course progresses, we'll go into more details about um, how these relationships come to be, are, are come are born and how they actually work on the markets more specifically. But the thing that I want you to take away in terms of how institutions support a market is basically they are the component parts of the market. When you took economics, micro, macro, or neoclassical economics, you were basically studying an amal amalgamation of the forces between business, government, and society. That is the market itself. So in order to understand markets, you need to understand all the component parts, which is what we're going to do right now. So the first institution that is designed to support a market is the judicial institution. Now, the judicial institution works to protect a market by more or less protecting property rights encouraging, and, and encouraging investment by making sure that dispute resolution is fair, uniform, and transparent. Some good examples of judicial institutions, of course, in the United States would be things like the Supreme Court, your local court, a superior court, you know, any of these kinds of courts that are designed to resolve conflicts between two parties. Next we have the regulatory institutions. And regulatory institutions typically stem from governments. They basically provide the public a degree of protection, and when I say the public, that can also include investors, uh, and they protect them from things like dishonesty, fraud, danger, or corruption. So they make sure that people have faith in the market and make sure that they will, at a very basic level, be protected. Of course, regulatory institutions in the United States would include a variety of executive agencies, think of the EPA, um, but it could also include like police forces or uh, county ordinance groups. So there's a variety of regulatory institutions that exist. Then we also have political institutions. Political institutions are the ones that set a lot of the rules of the game. They make economic policy. They are the ones who are collecting your taxes. Uh, they provide certain social safety nets like welfare, Medicare, Medicaid. And they serve it as an important check on unrestrained business power. Of course, political institutions could be any lawmakers that you can think of, uh, members of Congress or, local, or members of your local legislative assembly. It could also be members of the executive branch, like the President of the United States, but it could also be mayors or state governors. Next we have cultural institutions. Cultural institutions are those institutions that impart values, habits, they may create norms, um, they may impose family or religious values, they could also define what should be looked at in terms of education. And cultural institutions, of course, could be, it could be schools, it could be family, uh, family units, or it could also be churches or religious groups. Our next is the media.
And the media serves to inform the public and in some way help commerce or business along through the sale of advertisement. And of course, media, you can think of all sorts of media, Facebook, Twitter, CNN, the Wall Street Journal, any sort of institution that is putting out information and also selling advertising, although that's not always necessary. Then we have corporations. Corporations basically take money or capital that is invested with labor. They, so they take the capital and the labor, they combine them. They also work to encourage risk taking by limiting liability. And they also are, while they are a, a corporation is a legal person, it is not a real person. And therefore, there's a degree of continuity that exists in corporations. Presidents and CEOs come and go, they are born and they die, but the corporation can always live on because it is a legal entity, a legal person. Examples of corporations, take any S&P 500 company, Standard & Poor 500 company. And then we have financial institutions. Your financial institutions are those that mobilize capital or money. They, and that capital can be used for saving, it can be for borrowing, it can be for lending, and it can be for investing. As far as I can tell, every country, irrespective of how they define a market, has all of these institutions in one form or another. If you can think of some examples of countries that don't have one of these institutions, absolutely put it in the comments down below. I'd, I'd love to hear about it. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to put them in uh, the comments and I will respond to you. And so our next video, we're going to really get into the meat and potatoes of this course. We're going to look at the four rational choice models and then the four normative choice ontologies. We're going to have a great time. I'm looking forward to seeing you then.